Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Supercars of London. I am lucky enough to have the keys to this car behind me. It's a 2015 Audi R8 V10 Spider. So this video is gonna be a review, a comparison, and also a first impressions of what this car is like to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. And as you know, I'm not too keen on convertibles. So whether this car can win me over is a story that I want to um, try and unravel in this video. So first things first, it is in gloss white with the red or Bordeaux roof, I think it is. It's got light gray interior. We'll have get onto the interior in a bit. And it's also got the 19 or 20 inch V10 wheels. I'm not entirely too sure. And this is the facelifted Audi R8. Things include new tail lights and new headlights. It's got new exhaust tips down there. And overall, it's just slightly more refined on the exterior and interior, which I'll go over. But overall, it has got a S-Tronic gearbox, which is the main boost compared to the automatic version of my car. So you can see the new headlights have got the different shaped LEDs as opposed to the dots that mine has across the bottom. It's slightly sharper around the front grille as well. We've got some sharper points around here. On the new Audi R8 V10, it is much sharper, much more angular, um, much, much like the um, Lamborghini. These are the old V10 wheels that you can see with the black calipers and the wing mirrors actually are a slightly different shape, slightly more angular. And as we come round to the back, you get to see the new tail lights with the coolest indicators and hazard lights. Seriously cool. The exhaust tips are circular as opposed to the overall that they had on the first R8 V10 and V10 Spider. Red for the R8 badge. And to be honest, Obviously, I prefer the coupe. I prefer the hard top because I think the lines are slightly spoiled with the fabric hard top. But I actually quite like the red roof. So let's jump in, check out some of the interior features and then go for a drive. So even from opening the door, you get that luxurious Audi feel and when the door shuts as well. Inside in the cockpit, there's lots of buttons. Of course, it's a convertible, so you get the extra buttons here to put the rear window down and also put the whole roof down. We'll test that out in a bit. The um, center console is pretty much exactly the same as my Audi R8 here. It's got the um, dampener suspension, which mine doesn't, but this one doesn't have parking sensors, so there isn't a button there. The sport button we're going to explore and as this is the S-Tronic we get this sort of gear stick where you can move up and down neutral reverse and all of that jazz and the dials if you can see them I've parked awkwardly so the steering wheel is in an awkward position but they're slightly more revised a little bit newer and it's also got a digital display which mine doesn't it's also got the Bang & Olufsen speakers and that is the view from the wing mirror so it's slightly more angular ever so slightly Let's start the V10 up and go for a cruise. Right, so as this is the S-Tronic gearbox, there's only two pedals, a brake and a accelerator. And immediately I'm gonna drop the windows because it's boiling in here and I need to cool down. And on the gear stick, you just flick it left. And we're in auto mode, we're gonna pull away in auto mode so that I can show you how smooth this S-Tronic gearbox is and how easy it is to drive as an everyday car. So it works like an automatic, you take your foot off the brake and immediately you begin to creep forward. And I mean, I'm in second gear now. Third gear now. It's super smooth. You don't have to worry about really concentrating at all very very relaxing to drive the suspension is soft and you can also you can press the suspension setting which hardens it up but really that's for sporty modes but just cruising around now like it's as easy to drive as the Audi A3s the Audi S3s but it's just got some serious power when you need it now my first impressions of this car when I got in it yesterday was it felt like 
very similar to my car, the V8, and it wasn't until I turned the traction control off and booted it that I really saw a difference. And someone's asked me on Twitter, or a few people asked me on Twitter, what the difference is to drive this car as opposed to my car. Now, I would have to say the S-Tronic gearbox is leagues ahead of the R-Tronic, but everyone knows that. Driving this, obviously all of the interior is so familiar for me that I've really just got used to the width of the car, the length of the car, the height of the car, and it's just, because I'm used to it, it it's really, really similar. The only thing that you sort of kind of get excited about is the fact that it's got V10 on the speedo as opposed to V8. The speedo goes up to the same speed, so that doesn't matter. Maneuvering this car around, the steering feels slightly lighter than my car. I'm not sure whether that's Audi engineering the steering to be lighter around town to maneuver it and things like that, but it just seems like it's a slightly lighter than my car. Maybe the Quattro system's a little bit more advanced. If someone asks me whether it's easy to drive this car or whether anyone can jump in this car, of course, anyone can jump in this car. You have to be respectful of the right pedal, the throttle pedal, because you do have 520 brake horsepower at your disposal in this car. So every time I get in a car that I haven't driven before or a car that isn't mine, like this car, I'm always very nervous about putting my foot on the accelerator, working out the sort of sensitivity of that pedal, working out where the power comes. And because this is a naturally aspirated engine, it comes pretty instantly. So let's bang it out of auto mode. Let's be done with the boring bit of the review or the first impressions drive. So in manual mode and sport mode, you still have to take a foot off the brake. It still works as an automatic car, but the paddles become manual, the exhaust valves open up, and it just becomes that little bit more responsive to what you want to do. If you start pressing the suspension button, you feel everything on the road, and it becomes a proper track car. And that is the fantastic thing about what Audi have been able to create. They've created an everyday usable car. Now, as you would have seen there, traction kicks in. This car is very powerful. You really need to turn the traction control off completely so that you can get a full feel of what it's like to go full throttle in this car. I've done this a couple of times. I've only had this car for 24 hours. And I've become very aware that the car still likes to drive itself a little bit. So you have to take off all aids. So I'm gonna turn the traction control off now. And there it says, stabilization control warning, restricted stability. Whereas I think when I do that in my car, it just takes everything off. You're in full control. Whether you spin, you spin. I don't know how sophisticated this system is and I don't particularly want to test it either. So what I'm gonna do is just basically give you an idea of how quick this car is as opposed to my car. One of the things that I first, when I first got in this car and put my foot down, it was in sport mode, but it didn't have the traction on. And like you would have just seen there, it holds back on that initial acceleration. Whereas when you've got the traction control off, you're in a completely different car. but just use the paddles all the time. Whether you're changing gear early, whether you're short shifting, or whether you're going up the whole rev range and then coming back down, you just can't help it. So my favorite mode, of course, is manual with sport. I'm just gonna put it into second gear now and use this car's party trick. Cruising at 19 miles an hour. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The roof comes down. And if you thought it was good with the roof up, on a day like today, this car is something else. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way. So 
now I'm going to take it back out of sport. I'm going to put it in the automatic mode because over the last 24 hours of me having this car, I've managed to um, burn quite a lot of fuel and the fuel light's coming on. So that proves that the V10 is slightly less economical than the V8. And that's not a bad thing because what are you going to expect from a 5.2 litre engine? The great pros of this car and the fact that the roof can come down, and this is gonna, it, I can't believe I'm even saying those words coming out of my mouth. Whereas two days ago, I didn't like convertibles, I didn't really understand why you would have one in the UK, and to a point, I still don't. I think these cars are better suited for the likes of the south of France and the south of Spain and the hot climate countries. Lamborghinis in, La, convertible Lamborghinis in Miami are the best thing ever. So, how can I summarize this car I think this is some sort of new breed of the supercar. Supercars always used to be about the fact that you couldn't drive them on a day-to-day -day basis. They were very, very unreliable. It was a special occasion. That's what made them so super. Whereas this is now a new type of super. It's a new type of occasion because you can drive it every single day. You don't have to drive it hard every day. It's just so usable around town, through the traffic, that it makes it so easy to, that you want to drive it every day but this car has a split personality that enables you to drive it every day have that sense of luxury and have that sense of specialness and the fact that you're getting into a car this good looking to go down to the shops to go to work wherever it is you can always look the absolute nuts on the road which is a fantastic feeling in a car like this but then you've also got the split personality that when you want to go for a hoon you can take the roof off, you can look down all of the windows, not worry about what you're going to look like when you turn up to your destination or whether you turn up home because your hair is going to be all over the place. And you can just go for an out and out hoon. And as you would have seen from my video of facing my fear and driving a convertible for the first time with the roof down, it's so much fun. It is so much fun. The only way that I can liken it to anything is it is like a roller coaster. It is just unbelievable. I'm going to put it back into sport now. I'm not going to bother too much. About the fuel. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that is my first impressions review. Let me know what you think. What, what should I call that video? Like, to me, this is getting to know the Audi R8 V10 24 hours in, finding out what it is like to drive a convertible with the roof down on a more long-term period, but also a car that is much faster, much more advanced than the car that I currently drive. And that's not saying that my car is bad at all. <laughs> I'm saying that my car is fun with manageable power. I think this is slightly moving away from the car that has manageable power and it turns into a bit of an animal when it wants to. But maybe that's what some people like. Who knows, what I cannot wait for is the brand new Audi R8 V10 Plus with the virtual cockpit, with a brand new engine straight out of the Lamborghini Huracan. It sounds as good as the Lamborghini Huracan and it looks, in my personal opinion, even better. So bring that on. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've thoroughly enjoyed filming it. And, um, well, fingers crossed I can enjoy editing it as well. Thanks so much, guys. Make sure that you subscribe. There's going to be tons of content coming. And don't forget, August is when the supercar season in London kicks off. So be prepared for that. Daily vlogs and everything. One more blast. I'm in the wrong gear, though. One more downshift. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Supercars of London. As you can see behind me, I have a 2015 Audi R8 V10 Spider. For those that don't know,